This is the ultimate showdown. Who is best between the EV Scope, Dwarf 2, Seastar, and Vespera? We'll put each of these to the test by not only pointing them at a deep sky object, but also to the moon, a planet, and the sun. Who is going to perform better? Place your bets now and let us know in the chat. How very Vegas of us. <laughs> um, so before we start, if you haven't already, watch part one of this video where we compared the design of each unit and how easy it is to install them and their respective specs, which is important for the second video. And now let's enter the ring, AKA the backyard and awaken each of these one by one. We're going to allow each unit to image the same target for exactly one hour. We'll pick a good beginner target for this test and go with the Orion Nebula. Very quickly, here are the full specs for each telescope if you'd like to pause the video and take a look. First up is the EV scope. The image became impressive very quickly in less than 30 seconds, but as you can see, the core was completely destroyed. It was still cool to look through the eyepiece, and the final picture after one hour wasn't bad despite the core. Next was the teeny tiny little dwarf. It is David versus Goliath, and who will come out on top? This was our first time using the dwarf ever, so we weren't really sure what settings to use. But let's assume that these were okay and see what we get. The result after an hour is great. The core looks natural and the other gases are nice too. The sea star is next to enter the ring. This is, I believe, the most popular smart telescope in the last few months. So let's see what it can do. The picture also got much better super quick and the end result is also pretty good. Vespera is the last one to show us what it can do, so watch out. We could have used mosaic mode to get more gases in the frame, but decided to just use the regular framing so that it's fair. And wow, another very good image and very close to the sea star in quality. It is time to reflect on these four images and decide which smart telescope got the best one. The Orion Nebula is the brightest and easiest nebula out there, so this target tends to look good no matter what, but at least because it was the same target for each, we have a fair comparison to show you anyway. Let's take a look at all four again. The first one to get KO'd in the ring, pop pop, in our opinion was the da 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 EV scope. Wah, wah. Sorry. Let's remember that this is a Gen 1 EV scope, so the new ones are probably better. The one coming in third place in terms of quality is the Dwarf 2. We like the wide field of view especially on this target, but the other two telescopes have more details and gases visible. So it's between Seastar and Vespera. Ooh. The two are almost identical, but Vespera has more detail, less noise, and no halo on the bright star. So Vespera is our winner of the deep sky imaging test. Let's move to lunar and planetary imaging. We know that smart telescopes are not designed to get crazy good pics of the moon and planets, but many of you will likely still try to snap pictures of these, so let's see what we can expect from each. To be fair, we're going to use the default automatic settings for each telescope and not touch the manual settings for now. Let's see if the scopes are smart enough to use the right setting for these bright objects. The first one will be the EV scope again. The moon doesn't look bad, but it's not too impressive either. Jupiter is actually pretty good here. The bands are even slightly visible. Neat. The moon through the dwarf 2 looks okay, but not as crisp as the EV scope. 
The image could potentially be enhanced and made much more detailed if using the life stacking feature of the dwarf, but shown here is just a single shot. The moon is very easy to find and if you want to salute to it manually thanks to the one angle lens, you can simply look for the bright moon in the sky. Center it in the wide field view and then switch to the telephoto lens. Jupiter, at that focal length, does not show any detail whatsoever. You can increase the brightness to see a couple of the bright moons near the planet, which is cool and better than nothing. The sea star does a great job at imaging the moon. In this shot, the details in the craters are, well, visible, and the crescent moon looks overall really pretty. The only issue is that using the default automatic settings, the lower part of the moon looks too bright, but you could probably fix that if you reduce the exposure time or, you know, adjust the gain a little bit. Using the automatic settings on Jupiter will make the planet appear overblown, but several moons are visible which is nice. You can once again likely get a better result if you fiddle with the settings. Vespera snapped a nice picture of the moon without any overblown regions. This moon phase was different than the one that we shot with the sea star, so maybe it helped a little bit as the moon was more visible, but either way, the moon looks great, detailed, and natural. As for Jupiter, Vespera impressed us here, because we were fully expecting the automatic software to use the same settings the sea star did and completely blow up the planet. Instead, we got a nicely exposed Jupiter, with even some very very faint bands visible. Who will take the crown as the best smart telescope for imaging the moon and planets? So for the moon, the EV scope and Dwarf 2 got an okay result, but nothing impressive. The sea star and Vespera got the two best images. Despite the sea star's moon being overexposed, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt and blame the smaller crescent moon phase for that. Detail-wise though, when comparing the craters of the sea star and Vespera moons, the better result comes from Vespera. For the planet, well, we have two well-exposed and two overexposed planets. If we zoom in on both well-exposed planets, the EV scope's image definitely shows more of Jupiter's bands and is overall better than Vespera's. This is not a surprise as the EV scope is the one with the longest focal length and largest aperture. The winner of the Lunar Astrophotography Contest, Vespera! Wah! Wah, 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 wah. The winner of the Planetary Astrophotography Test, Evisco! Not everyone is interested in solar photography, but it is nice to know that smart telescopes can easily take pictures of the sun, which can also be exciting if you're looking for an easy way to shoot solar eclipses. Let's see what kind of images we can get from the four smart telescopes pointed at the sun. Sadly, we could not get a solar filter for the EV scope when we were testing, so instead of skipping the sun, we decided to grab a picture from online forums from a different user. And the sun looks really good with the EV scope, with a lot of texture and great natural color. Just like the moon, the sun fits nicely in the EV scope's field of view, despite its longer focal length. The sun is easy to center in the Dwarf 2's telephoto field of view thanks to the wide field camera. Through Dwarf Lab's solar filters, the sun doesn't look like orangey red like other telescopes, it looks white. This doesn't really matter, as you can still see the sunspot activities just as well. But it does feel a bit less exciting without that wow factor that the bright red sun gives. The sun through the sea star is the one that looks the most colorful and saturated of all. It is very bright red and orange, with the sunspots nicely visible when active. Finding the sun with a sea star is automatic, as long as you're perfectly level. But you might sometimes need to center it manually, which can be tricky. The sun with Vespera isn't as saturated as the picture the sea star produced, but it does show slightly more textures on the surface, although not as much as the EV scope. The sun overall looks nice using Vespera, and slowing to it is a breeze, thanks to a very smart yet simple technique which we go over in our solar photography tutorial using Vespera. The sun looks nice using each of the smart telescopes, and each time, it only took a few minutes to set the device down and snap a picture. 
At first glance, the most impressive result seems to be the one from the Sea Star, but that is mostly because it is the most visually colorful. When zooming in on each image, the EV scope by far shows the most details and texture on the surface while still having natural color. Vespera comes quite close to the EV scope's result and probably can top it with some processing on a computer. But right out of the unit, the EV scope wins this round. So the winner of the solar photography test, the Unistellar EV scope. Whoa! So that was a really fun comparison, and we went over all the physical differences between these four smart telescopes, their specifications, and talked about the advantages of each one, and finally compared their capabilities under the stars. That was fun. But one question remains, which is, what is the best smart telescope? So design-wise, physically, the overall winner in our opinion is the Dwarf 2. It's much smaller and lighter than the other three smart telescopes, making it even easier to travel or go anywhere with it, and it's also less difficult for kids to set up. It also has a really nice magnetic filter adapter, which makes it such a breeze to attach or remove filters in like one second. Now for deep sky astrophotography, and the $1,500 price tag is not an issue, uh, the smart telescope that produces the best results is Vespera. Mm. So the data is more detailed, it has less noise than what the other telescopes showed. The cover lens, which is the mosaic feature, is also a fantastic idea which allows you to widen your field of view uh, even more and completely customize the aspect ratio. So fun. So for deep space imaging, Vespera is on top. So as for the price now, uh, at the time of making this review, uh, the prices for these four telescopes are um, very different. So for example, the EV scope, uh, Gen 2 is $4,900 uh, know, for the newer generations. Mm -hmm. The Dwarf 2 is just $459. The, the most affordable. Yeah, that's the most affordable of all. Uh, the Sea Star is $499 and the Vespera is $1,500. So as you can see, the most affordable is the Dwarf 2, then the Sea Star, following closely at $4.99. And if you're looking for a budget-friendly telescope, you should of course pick one of those two. Those would be the best options. The Dwarf is tiny, it's like very light, but the Sea Star also produces higher resolution images. So really is just depending on what you want to get out of it. And considering that ZWO also decided to include a free solar filter with the Sea Star, the price difference between the two just, it doesn't exist, so if you're planning on getting a solar filter anyway, th there it is. If you want to see more images uh, with each of these telescopes, we have like a full written uh, and video review on Vespera as well as the Sea Star, and we're currently working on a review of the Dwarf, so, so fun. And before we end this video, let's mention two important things that also might matter in your decision to go with one telescope over the other. Uh, those are the field of view and the app. The telescope with the widest field of view is both the dwarf with three degrees and Vespera, which is up to 3.2 degrees times 1.8 degrees. So this is great as you're able to fit most deep sky objects in your frame without having cutoffs. The Sea Star and the EV scope have narrower field of views, which means some large objects, uh, especially with the EV scope, will not fit entirely in the frame. And lastly, the app. Our two favorite apps are the app for Vespera and the app for Sea Star. And the app for Vespera honestly is really close to perfect. We think it's fast, full of information, beautifully designed and really easy to use. And the one from Sea Star is similar, although you can tell that it's new, so there is still some room for improvement, but we're sure that's gonna be improved in no time. The Dwarf app is okay. It is fast and easy to connect to and it seems to be updated very, very often, which is nice to see, but on the first use, it can be a bit overwhelming to see all of those tabs uh, and settings uh, on the screen, and the wording is a bit strange here and there, so it definitely takes some getting used to. The EVScope app has a beautiful design, but when compared to the one used for Vespera, for example, it is much, much more empty. Overall, it is easy to use and works well, though. And uh, that's it. 
<laughs> we hope that you really like this video and I don't know if we forgot anything, but you let us know because we'll add it to our written post, not a problem. And you can always check that out in the link below. So just please also consider joining our Patreon if you found this video super duper useful. Uh, and you can find that link below as well. So we'll see you guys next time and clear skies. Bye.